Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here. This is going to be week number 10 of the APA Academy and we're up against Stephen Thurston and he has had a monster season. He's going to be one of the top seeds uh, in the whole dang league and we have a very interesting matchup. Uh, I don't know how quite how well we match up against him. Uh, we do have the Mega Gallade this week. Uh, on our third and final draft, but he has some very hard checks to it, like the Palace and like the Celestila. Um, Celestila is a, a bit of a softer check, but it can check me pretty darn easily, and the Mega Altaria more than anything else. But also just the Victini being around is such a huge, huge threat to me, but uh, I did want to have things like my Heatran to kind of be a check to the Victini, to kind of be a check to the um, Celestila, and I think I match up decently well here. It's just going to be a matter of what kind of momentum I can get in the early game and how I can kind of deal with his threats. I do also have an Aromatisse, which um, I believe had uh, was a Calm Mind Aromatisse that could potentially start to do a lot of things in this matchup. It did have Calm Mind with Thunderbolt just in case Celestia could come in. I didn't really think that the Celestia would be able to just come in and Oko me like straight off the bat. So maybe if I could catch it off guard with a like, well-timed out Thunderbolt, then that could have been something interesting. But I do have a... Uh, Needle Queen, a physically defensive Needle Queen just behind my head, uh, as well as my Gallade, the Galvantulas, uh, I don't think the Galvantula has webs, I don't think webs are going to be hugely important in this matchup, uh, I just think that Galvantula had a pretty decent matchup here, and the Zygarde 10%, which of course is one of my all-time all favorites, I just love using Zygarde 10%. But uh, I'm just going to get into the match. I don't honestly quite remember what I let off with. Uh, I'm going to be reacting to this match as much as anything else. I am sorry for this match coming out late, but um, I had a recording issue. So you're going to see I'm on the other side of this matchup. And um, I had to use my opponent's battle code, but uh, I'm going to try to deal with it as best I can. He leads off with a Victini, and I lead off with a Zygarde. Now... I kind of thought that he might be Scarf, but either way, I didn't think that he would want to stay in here, so I uh, switched out immediately, uh, kind of assuming that he would want to switch out and not trying to assume, because uh, uh, even if he was Scarf, I thought that he would might, that he might assume that I was Scarf as well, so I didn't think that he would want to play that game, but I go into Heatran as he just uh, U-turns out, calls my bluff, I guess, but uh, puts me in a bad spot, puts my puts his Kinkelter in, in front of my Heatran, and now I have to double back out and try to go out into... Um, my Nita Queen, which is the best thing that's going to be able to take this thing on. And uh, I just fire off a Sludge Wave trying to get some type of damage off. I didn't really um, expect this thing to be able to hit me too, too hard. But now here's where I finally start to see that this thing is Assault Vested. Now, my uh, so much of my prep was devoted to trying to kind of counteract a Guts Flame Orb, like, monster attack stat. Um, Conkelder, but this actually turned out to be... Uh, Pretty much no attack investment, I believe, but it is still guts, but uh, it's pretty much no attack investment um, Assault vested which really threw me off quite a bit But uh, I got to I got a chance to collect myself after that and I did go into the aromatisse Which does take pretty next to nothing against this thing I do have to fear the poison jab, but even then uh, knowing that this thing doesn't have much attack investment uh, I don't even have to really fear that as much but uh, I might have just tried to fire off a Moon Blast here. No, I doubled out. Uh, I just doubled out immediately to try to get some momentum going my way because I knew that he would, wouldn't want to stay in, in this situation. So uh, this probably isn't the best uh, matchup for me. I thought that he would try to fire, fire off an Air Slash in this situation. Um, but instead, he goes for the Heavy Slam. Now, this is a moment where I just like completely wasn't thinking because in my head, I thought he would need the Heavy Slam. He would need the the um oh this is a scarf you train as well um but in my head i was thinking he would need the heavy slam and he would need the air slash and i don't know maybe sub leech seed i don't know for whatever reason like earthquake i, I was not even thinking about earthquake i thought that this heat train would force the switch out especially um i guess he would feel comfort comfortable staying in maybe he was um Alkabir or something to that effect but i really didn't even expect him to stay in so i make the super aggressive play and just stay in to uh, try to set up rocks and try to force out the switch, but he just stays in. He calls me 100% on this play, and I lose my Heatran, which is some of my best checks to, like I said, the Victini and the Celestia. But um, this, this um, Kinkelder is going to come in and take this energy ball. He takes it perfectly fine. And this entire match, I'm going to have to play these games where I know he has the Palace Hand in the back, but does he go hard into Palace Hand on my, um, on my uh, Galvantula? And I click Energy Ball, which doesn't do much of anything, but um, here's another moment, right, where I bring in my 
my Glade to eat up that, that knockoff, and I realized that I didn't even make my Glade justified, and that was just another moment of me really, um... Not feeling good in in prep. I felt really flustered in this match, and that was just another moment where I just felt really flustered. I felt really behind in this match a lot, and I I mean I clearly don't think I was in the right headspace to kind of like uh, do well in this match. But uh, that seeing that I missed justified on that um, on that uh, Galay just kind of disappointed me in myself in that moment. But regardless. Um, his palace hand was always going to be his dedicated switch in, and I thought that he wouldn't go into it right away because to try to fear the knockoff a little bit, but he goes into it, he goes hard into it, and I, uh, double out into my Aromatisse, and he ends up going for the Z move. That is exactly the interaction that he wanted. He wanted me to stay in with my Gallade and get off a Z move and try to eat the knockoff, potentially. But, um, ultimately, this thing takes it reasonably well, and I... Do believe I would throw up a wish here? I have to imagine. And regardless, this Romatisse is close to max defense. It's max defense with with Calm Mind. I don't expect this to like 6-0 Calm Mind sweep, but um, this thing can kind of hold its own against his more physical threats and uh, be able to dish out some damage. That'll kind of set me up for the later game. That's my thinking behind this Romatisse. But um, as soon as I throw up the wish, I feel like I have to switch out because uh, I was doing some calcs and this thing doesn't do a whole ton of damage. Even if he did try to poison jab me, which would be the best play for him to go for, it doesn't do enough to my Nita Queen where um, I can't just wish back up for pretty much free here. And this is going to put my my um, Nita Queen in a position where I can try to at least switch into the Conkelder a little bit better. And that's what I'm going to really need for the, for the uh, end game here. Uh, as he does go back into the palace hand, and this really surprised me because um, I thought he would be cognizant of the fact that I would want to like maybe sludge wave into an ice beam or some or earth power into an ice beam. I didn't know quite how much damage I was doing to palace hand, but I didn't think that he would want to risk the palace hand uh, that uh, early on in the match. But here's another situation where. I have to make this 50 50 i have to click energy ball and, and i think now he's in my head he knows that i have to click energy ball so even when uh the palace hand is, is is right in front of him he is uh going out into the conkelder and the conkelder is just taking this hit so well you can see even this um thunder is only doing about 25 percent it is going to be still a 2 ko so maybe he's in the 30 percent range but i'm not doing enough where i really i'm not doing as much damage as i really need to be doing to kind of make headway in this matchup but I'm feeling reasonably good about uh, how much damage my Thunder is doing. I just need to put myself in, a, in the right position. Oh, this Galvantula has Z move, I believe, to try to take on um, some of his threats that are going to be weaker to the Z Thunder. But uh, I go into my dedicated switch because I want to try to get something happening. Whether it's Wish or Calm Mind, I want to try to get something happening here. And that's really the only way that I'm going to be able to build momentum and ultimately try to win this matchup. But uh, he's able to go into this Cell Stila, and I do throw up another Wish. So uh, I think I, I think I start trying to calc out to see whether or not I take a Heavy Slam, whether or not I can stay in here and click Thunderbolt or something to that effect. I think my entire set is just Calm Mind, um, Wish, Thunderbolt, and uh, Moonblast. But I end up trying to pass it off to my Galvantula. And this is also kind of an attempt to try to um, maintain my Galvantula as a threat to things like the Celesteela. But here, uh, he misses a Leech Seed, which is fine. I would have gotten a lot of HP back anyway, but here is where uh, I Volt Switch here. I, he's so far in my head that he knew exactly where I was going to finally try to pull the trigger and click Volt Switch here. And his palace hand just eats it up and i like i said he is so in my head he's so out he's so aggressively outplaying me right now that i'm not even quite sure how to maneuver this this matchup so we both switch out i go into my aromatease uh again trying to get something going my aromatease uh, can still potentially win weirdly enough um but i need to find a way to make it to put that in a position to win but uh Right now, I'm, I'm in a bad position where I have to hit what's in front of me because this Victini can beat me now, especially now that the uh, that I let the Heat Train go down in the way that I did. Um, and I was doing some calcs, and I felt confident enough that he wasn't going to be, like, super ultra banded and, and like, be able to straight Oko me with, with a V-Create. So, I stayed in here. I tried to nullify this Victini a, a little bit. My main thinking was that, like, look, if if, if my Roman T is going to go down in this situation, then then it's going to be, like, so so lowered through through uh v creates it's gonna lower its own stats enough to, to v create that it's gonna open the door for something uh that i want to switch in here but i end up trying to i guess 
um, switch. Oh yeah, no, I had the wish up in the air. So, so if he went for another V create, um, my Zygarde would have been able to take the V create and uh, wish back up to near full. But uh, I end up making another switch as um, I thought he was gonna shadow ball. I think in this situation, and he just clicked Earth Power, and my um. Anita Queen does not take that well, and he knows that I have to click Ice Beam, and he goes into his Assault Vested uh, uh, Conkelda, which again, these are truly, like, interesting plays because of the way that we've been playing this matchup, right? In the early game, he was fine um, staying in on a Palace and, and letting me potentially click Earth Power, but now later in the match, he knows what I, he knows what I'm trying to do. He's in my head. He knows me at this point, and he knows that he can switch out on the ice beam into the Kinkelder. So he just is outplaying me in every capacity right now. And at this point, the match is pretty much over. He's, um, uh, I made a huge huge mistake by thinking that the Nita Queen could take a mock punch, um, especially now that this thing has guts, which I didn't know at the time, but obviously, um, it makes sense that he would want to have guts even with the assault vest. But um. Yeah, at this point, I'm just trying to get a couple of differential points here and there. But uh, this match was pretty much over. Like I said, he was in my head from the beginning. I think um, I think my team matched up. It, it matched up in a way where he could kind of like get a feel for me early on, and and I don't know, just just a, just a couple different things happened in this matchup in general where. Uh, he just got a feel for me early on, and after that, it was pretty much over. He he was in my head from the beginning. Um, he made some reasonably risky plays, but he did that from a position of kind of knowing what I was going to do. If I had made a couple of early calls, I think it would have gone a whole heck of a lot differently, especially around my Galvantula. If I had gone for a Z-Thunder on my Galvantula um, earlier on and just said, heck it, to, if the Palzan wants to come in, then... That would have put me in an interesting position with the Kinkelder because the Kinkelder would have been weakened a lot earlier on in the match, and potentially I can try to get something going. But um, from here on out, this is going to be my Zygarde, which I believe is banded. I'm almost positive that my Zygarde is banded, if I can remember correctly. Um, and I can't really do much. I um, after the match, I was thinking like, oh, maybe I could switch out and like do the play these kind of games where I give up my my Galade and then my uh, Zygarde can come back in at extreme speed, but he could always play around that pretty darn easily. Um, I don't think I did anything crazy badly, but I just played far too conservatively, and he played, and all of his gambles paid off for him, I think. Um, and it just came from him playing super aggressively and just calling, and calling everything that I really wanted to do in this matchup here. But... Uh, these, these are just going to be the, the the last few turns. I don't have anything that can uh, even hit this even hit this Altaria at this point. It's just going to be a matter of um, him clicking return a few more times and taking out the rest of my team. Uh, like I said, he just played super duper well. He called uh, everything that I wanted to do, and this is why he has such an, a ridiculous record right now. He was probably getting into everybody's heads all season long and it really shows. And his record in, in his drafting, he drafts really well and it just puts him in the best positions to win. Um, I think if we meet each other in playoffs, obviously our teams are going to be very, very different, but I think I have so many tools to bring in a playoffs um, team build that I would like to think that it, that it would come out really, really differently. But it's just going to be a matter of me playing better and playing in a way that puts me in a position to win. But uh, this was a really fun match. This was the first time that I got to play him. This is my first time that I got to see how he plays and how he reacts to my my own play and my own strategy. And uh, it's going to be really, really fun for the future uh, in an upcoming playoffs round if we get to that point. Um, we're almost certainly going to be in playoffs, but whether or not we meet up with him in the playoffs is going to go down to a whole lot of different factors but with that we'll be back really really soon with uh the final two weeks of the ap academy as well as uh the final couple weeks of the mpl as well and uh the ubl coming up really really soon and more weeks of the icba coming up really really soon but with that once again thank you guys so much for watching i hope you once again